So, Apple just concluded the launch event for the new products in September 2022. As far as I can see, the new products should be ready for pickup very soon. I think they said within the next two weeks they'll be ready for pickup. So, the first thing they started with was Apple's new Apple Watch called the Ultra model. Now, originally I thought it was going to be called the Pro model because they had all of these leaks on the internet that showed the shape that was leaked. So as you can see, it has like a little bulge that encapsulates the button and it encapsulates the digital crown. So I wasn't exactly sure of all the things that they were going to add to it. And some people were saying they think that the bulge looks ugly. However, after today, after it's been unveiled, I really think that given all of the things that it can do, I really don't think that that's going to be a concern anymore. See, you know, um, what they did, they spent a lot of time with Apple Watch going through women's health and all this stuff. They're talking about, the okay, we got a new temperature sensor so that this way the women know when they're ovulating so they can wake their husband up and get their freak on at night and shit. I was like, okay. You know, I kind of tuned out when I was listening to that because uh, it was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's... Yeah, that's, I mean, the temperature sensor is cool and everything because, you know, I thought, I originally thought the whole point of the temperature sensor would be for you know, monitoring like COVID, but apparently after the election was over uh, in uh, 2020, apparently COVID is not a big issue anymore. Apparently it was a really, really big, serious issue when it when it came down to Trump versus Biden, but now we're not even really thinking about COVID no more. So uh, it morphed into monkeypox and then it morphed into I saw Fauci on the news today. Oh, yeah, man, if this thing mutates again, it could get a lot worse. And uh, ultimately, everybody at my office today was maskless. There are some situations where we still have to wear a mask, like on the train and the bus. But for the most part, nobody's even thinking about COVID, which actually kind of interests me because there were certain features that I thought Apple might have introduced in order to deal specifically with COVID. Like the temperature sensor is one because measuring body temperature, imagine being able to show your watch and your watch shows them exactly what your body temperature is. I thought that that might have actually been a good use for it. However, Apple didn't mention COVID at all. Like, from what I heard, like, I listened to it as much as I could, but it, as far as I could see, they didn't mention COVID at all. The only thing they were talking about was temperature sensing for women's health, talking about her waking up in the middle of the night and ovulating and this, that, and other. So, okay, fine. The, the watch can tell my temperature. Great. I guess that's a, that's a great thing, right? So the regular Apple Watch is going to have that, and so is the Apple Watch Ultra. Now, what did interest me with the Apple Watch Ultra, okay, it's a little bit more bigger. They're saying that this thing is going to have 36 hours of a single charge, which I find is awesome. Now, when I take my flights and I go international, basically on the plane, I usually bring my iPhone charger, the lightning cable, and I also usually bring my Apple Watch cable because, as you know, the Apple Watch has a magnetic induction charger. And um, f even when I was on that plane uh, on Emirates when I was headed to Maldives in business class, I was charging my Apple Watch uh, using one of their USB uh, fast chargers that was built into the seat. Now... Being able to charge the watch 36 hours, that's pretty damn good. So already, okay, the Apple Watch battery life for the Ultra, I like that. That's pretty damn cool. 36 hours on a single charge, up to 36 hours on a single charge. That's pretty damn cool. So I like that because thus far, I think the best battery life I ever got out of an Apple Watch was Apple Watch 2. And that was only about, let's say, a day and a little bit more than, let's say about a day and a half. So that Apple Watch Ultra looks good. The first thing you're going to ask is, am I going to buy it? Uh, the answer is no. And there's a reason why I'm not going to buy it. First of all, the major features that I saw on it that I really liked had to do with diving and scuba, scuba diving and like deep sea diving. It has a depth sensor. I think that's pretty cool. However, I don't really do diving sports. 
Uh, even when I was in Maldives, it was like, yeah, some of you may have seen the photos that we took uh, while we were diving with those animals and everything. I really am not a diver like that. I don't like I, I don't really like being around like big animals and stuff like that underwater because you never know. Some of these orcas and shit, they might fuck you up. I mean, look at Steve Irwin. I mean, that shit fucking stingray stung him in the goddamn heart. So it's like usually I just back off. When I see these animals and stuff underwater, even dolphins, they can be really dangerous. Like dolphins, you got to remember, those are underwater animals. And if they're not careful, they could slap you around. They can break your goddamn legs or your back. So it's like usually I don't really play with the animals too much. I just I just sit back, take pictures of them. That's it for me. So, um, I mean, we had the whale sharks and the whale sharks. I mean, yeah, that, that was cool and everything. But my my thing is, it's like deep water diving. I'm not too crazy about it. Now, I like that feature. And I like the fact that it's so water resistant that you could actually do some deep sea diving with it. And I really liked the way the uh, feature looked. So um, they're talking about like it has the depth sensor where as you go down into the water, this thing um, has a depth gauge. I really like that. And it's EN13319 certified. I like that. They also had some new loops. I think the new loops are really nice. Uh, they have one that looks like it's for climbers. And uh, then they have one that looks like it's a little bit like uh, more rugged for the divers. I like that. That was pretty damn cool. Um so they spent a lot of time talking about the Apple Watch. And for the price to be $800, I actually thought that was pretty good. Because I really, in the back of my mind, we're all waiting for them to release the price. I thought it was going to be $1,000. I thought that it, it would be like ninety nine, like nine ninety nine. That's what I thought it would be. So they actually surprised me by making it about $100 less. Why they call it $7.99 instead of $800, I don't know. But it's psychological that they, you know, it's these games they play. But um, Apple Watch Ultra looked really good. They also have some new uh, designs and some new features for the regular Apple Watch 8. And um, basically, if the watch falls or it's on your body and you fall, the watch senses the fall, just like it's been doing for a number of series and it can automatically dial emergency um on top of the automatic emergency system it also has a uh, emergency chirp sos now in my opinion what it really looked like to me was that at this point apple has basically created a watch that's superior to what's called the brightling emergency and you probably don't know too much about that because most people aren't shopping for watches like that. So basically what the Breitling emergency is, now I have a couple of Pilots watches, but my thing was I wasn't about to pay these people $16,000 just for a watch. The Breitling emergency comes with a feature that's called the emergency. So it's a Breitling watch and it comes with this feature where basically there's a second crown there and that crown has a twist. And when you twist it, it pulls out to be an antenna. When you pull that antenna out, it sends out an SOS. Now the issue with that is that SOS is going to summon emergency rescue. So if you're not actually in trouble you can actually be fined up to like $25,000 for signaling these people when you're not really in trouble. Now, here's the thing. Between the iPhone and the Apple Watch, this is basically what they've done. So let's say you're on an airplane and let's say you crash in the Andes Mountains and you're afraid you're going to have to start eating people, right? The people you know who are dead, you're going to eat them. Now, with this, the watch automatically knows you crashed. And it sends a signal to the phone to call for help. So assuming that you're in a space where the phone can call for help, you can radio the authorities to come get you off the Andes Mountains. Apple also unveiled satellite feed. So basically their satellite feed allows the phone to locate satellites if you are under open sky. So that means that even if you're in a place where there's no cellular signal, the satellite feed can locate a satellite, 
send a signal to the satellite and you can still get help. So basically between iPhone and Apple Watch, they've basically created a superior diving watch to just about all of these mechanical devices that aren't specifically designed for ultra deep sea diving. Like the average person is not diving like, you know, a thousand fucking meters. Like the, the average person's not doing that. You know, the average person is swimming with uh, dolphins or sharks or something like that in Maldives, Bora Bora, or Seychelles. The average person is not super deep sea diving. So basically, they have a great emergency watch feature, which, like, it tells you your, uh, what is it called? It tells you your, uh, uh, your uh, what is it called? It tells you where you are. It tells you, um, it tells you basically where you are, and it also tells you um, your compass directions. If you get the um, Ultra model, it tells you pretty much everything with the digital compass and all that. And um, they they said that if you're a runner and you have the Pro model, it, it automatically knows when you walk up to like a track. So I, I, I thought that was actually pretty cool. You know, so they, they had a lot of features in this thing. You know, the blood oxygen sensor has been there since the 6. Um, the EKG or ECG, I should say. The ECG has been there since the 5. Um, my thing was, with the Apple Watch 6, I didn't feel like I got a lot of battery life out of the I Apple Watch 6. So with this Apple Watch Ultra, and they're talking about 36 hours. Well, even though I might not use it so much for the deep sea diving, I have to say, having 36 hours makes it probably worth the money alongside the other things. Because they're saying if your car rolls over or if you get in a car crash, it'll automatically dial emergency. Because they were saying, oh yeah, well a lot of these people live in rural areas and they're alone and shit. And they run into car, uh, trees or they run into another car. And um, you know some people get knocked unconscious, and the watch will automatically signal out help and everything. Or like, let's say you're an old woman and you've fallen and you can't get up. Okay, yeah, I mean that's pretty damn cool. So all of this stuff is there. And um, besides the battery life and the deep sea tech and the um, more rugged body and everything. I thought that the Apple Watch presentation was actually pretty good. It was pretty uh, thorough. It looked like they had everything that somebody who wants to buy a new Apple Watch could need. Because you got to remember, there's a lot of newcomers to Apple Watch who've never had an Apple Watch before. And this will be their first Apple Watch. And they're getting everything that we've had since Apple Watch 1. They're, they're even getting the ability to make phone calls off of the damn watch. If they if they buy the uh, the full model that has LTE and everything, so I have to say this is um, pretty enticing. But again, I'm not gonna buy one because I already have a couple of pilots watches. I have a nice expensive uh, what is it called, an Omega Speedmaster Pro and everything. And then I have like uh, I did some videos on them. I did uh, uh, the uh, EcoDrive Skyhawk AT series and. Um, I've got three of those, and um, right now I don't really need another watch. And Apple Watch 6, I did a video when I bought that. Um, so far, so good. I, I think that if you are to buy an Apple Watch, the smartest thing you could do is buy the Ultra model. However, I don't know if I would buy it right now. I would probably wait until it goes on sale next year, and then you'll be able to knock 100 maybe even $200 off because they'll have a new one come out. But um, I think I'm going to wait until there's an absolute... something I absolutely need innovated on in that watch. And I really can't think of anything because to tell you the God's honest truth, the mere fact that they've got a 36-hour battery on the thing that in and of itself is the one reason why I would rush to buy it. Except that right now I'm just not in the market to just buy another one. Could that change? Could I change my attitude? Yeah, I could. But what I was really interested in was the iPhone. And that's the thing I got to talk about now. The iPhone. So, on a lighter note, they had the AirPods Pro. $250. 
Now, the one thing that stood out to me was the fact that they've created a capacitive touch area on the uh, stalk itself, which allows you to adjust volume just by touching it. It senses your finger. And then just by rubbing it up or down, it allows you to adjust the volume. I thought that that was actually really innovative. Now, there's been a lot of people that were attacking Apple about innovation. Oh, yeah, you haven't innovated and this, that, and other. Meanwhile, the best that the competitor can come up with is a slower CPU phone that folds. Personally, I see no reason for the phones to fold. I see no, as far as I'm concerned, uh, folding phones is an answer to a question nobody asked. Glass don't fold. I want my phone to be as resilient and as rugged as possible. I don't need it folding. Like, here's my question. For all of you men who go out and buy a goddamn folding phone, you're walking around with some shit that looks like a, a, a makeup kit. And and you, when you unfold that thing, like, you look like you're putting on makeup, basically. And I'm not saying that that's the reason I wouldn't buy it. I'm just saying it, it doesn't make any sense to me for a phone to fold. It doesn't make any sense to In fact... To me, that's an extra step that I don't need to take. It's like, it doesn't even make sense to me. It's like an extra step. Why the fuck? When I pull out my phone, I'm able to hit one button and just start talking. You're adding a whole nother step where I got to unfold the goddamn phone. And that just doesn't make sense to me. So if that's your idea of innovation, then I guess you're just going to have to take it or leave it. If you don't like it, you can stick with Android or whatever because nobody cares. So as you can see, yes, this is the aforementioned satellite emergency feature that's going to be an iPhone 14. Um, I don't usually go any place uh, hiking or in the desert or anything. So this is the type of feature for like that guy who uh, had to saw off his own arm in, when he got stuck under that rock. Like, that guy would need a feature like this. So this way he could call the authorities. They could come and they could get, like, a car and they could take that rock off him. Um, other than that, uh, right to the iPhone 14. So they say iPhone 14 has not suffered any price hikes, which I think a lot of people will be happy about. But for the most part, as I've seen it, iPhone really hasn't had any price hikes. Somehow... And it's probably because these things are overpriced in the first place. They've probably marked them up so much that by making it look like there's no price hike, the reality is they're still walking away with more money than you'd imagine that they'd normally make. But the bottom line is um, there are no visible price hikes. So what they're saying is that iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Plus are going to start at $799. So they're saying iPhone 14 is $799 and the Plus will be $899. So it's $100 more for the bigger screen. So for the most part, what you're getting is you're getting iPhone 13 technology for the most part. But you're getting some of the updates that you get with the iPhone 14. The thing that was most interesting to me is the fact that they said there's going to be no more physical f SIM cards. Now, usually when I take my iPhone to another country that I'm going to be in for, let's say, a month, because usually the longest I'll stay is about a month, maybe a little bit, a month and a half. But um, like, for example, when I go to Thailand or I go to the Philippines, when I went to the Philippines last time, I got a SIM card as soon as I got off the plane. And uh, they pop that SIM card into your phone and you have an unlimited uh, data plan for like $25 a month. It's like unlimited data, phone, and text, right? But when they say unlimited, what it really comes down to is you have unlimited phone and you have unlimited text, but your data plan is actually limited. So, you know, they say unlimited, it's not. But for the most part... When I go to other countries, if I know I'm going to be there like a month, I get their SIM card and I use their servers and I use their tele-network. When I was in Seychelles, I did the exact same thing. And fortunately, I was smart enough that when I went to Seychelles, I bought two phones. I bought my iPhone 4S and I bought my iPhone 6 Plus. Unfortunately, and this was a long, long time ago, this was many years ago, when my iPhone 6 Plus got wet it got damaged by beach water now these iphones are very very water resistant because i i took my iphone uh 13 
into beach water in Maldives. No problems. I did try to cover it up to make sure that no water could get into it, but some water did make its way on there. I didn't have any problem with it. No corrosion, no damage, no nothing. But my iPhone 6, years ago in Seychelles, my iPhone 6 burned out. I had to go the rest of that trip. And I was only there for like three more days. But after that phone died, I was able to use my iPhone 4S in order to get around. Unfortunately, the video quality that I was able to get on the iPhone 4S and the picture quality was just nowhere near as good as what I was getting on the 6. So, why do I say all that? Well, um, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people who were listening to this. And when they heard that there's no more SIM cards, that there's an eSIM that's going to handle multiple accounts, I'm pretty sure a lot of people were disappointed by that. So, all I can say is, listen, if you're the type of person that travels a lot and you need to have a travel phone that can accept other SIM cards, uh, hold on to your iPhone 13 or your iPhone 12 or your iPhone 11. Just hold on to it. If you want to get a new phone, get a new phone, which you might not even need. But hold on to the older phone. Every now and then, I hold on to an old phone. Like, for example, when I upgrade to this iPhone 14, I'm going to probably hold on to one of my older phones because what I usually do is when I get a new phone, I upgrade my parents. So when I have iPhone 14 in my hands, I'm going to erase all the data off my iPhone 13 and I'm going to upgrade my mom. Then I'm going to erase all the data on her phone and put it on the 13, and then I'm going to take her phone, which is the 12 Pro Max, and I'm going to give that one to my father. So as you can see, I hand me down to my parents, which for the most part, they don't know anything about technology, so they're very lucky that they have a son who's literally wasting, um, let's say, $800 or more to upgrade them for free. So, you know, and both of them are retired, so they don't need the battery as much as I do because... You know, I, I work and they don't. So they're sitting around, you know, enjoying retirement and shit. And I'm trying to make it to retirement so that I can get to the point where I don't have to do a motherfucking thing. But uh, they're sitting on their asses chilling. So my thing is, y'all are lucky that I'm upgrading y'all and I'm doing it for free. So anyway, let's get away from that. Um, so they basically said, it, it, long story short, brighter display better sound quality, better light performance with the camera. And they have an action mode, which is basically a, a more aggressive digital stabilizer for the uh, camera when you're shooting video. Um, and then they have the safety service called Emergency SOS. Um, it's free for f iPhone 14 users in the US and Canada and launches in Canada. Okay. Um, then they had the... Uh, the as I said, the uh, what is it called? The AirPods Pro. Then, as you can see again, this is a picture of a diver with the ultra underwater watch. Um, and then after that, you're talking about the Apple Watch SE is two hundred forty nine dollars. Um, the 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 SE uh, the 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 things that they included they have a slightly bigger screen than they had before. Uh, plastic design on the underside of the watch, heart rate notifications, and fall detection. Okay, great. Um, so it'll be two forty nine or two ninety nine. They're saying, uh, starting on September sixteenth, Apple is marketing it as a device for children who might not need their own iPhone. Okay, great. Um, Apple Watch announced uh, the temperature sensor. I already talked about that, and then when you get to iPhone Pro, which they saved all the way for the end. Um, I will say this. iPhone Pro, iPhone 14 Pro. No, first of all, I'm going to buy it. Yes. Um, okay, so this is the iPhone, iPhone Plus. Uh, I'm looking for the Pro model. Let me just throw that in there. Yes, here we go. Apple announces iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max. No price increase. So as I said, chances are they had these things marked up so much that by not having a price increase that there actually is one. But bottom line is, yeah, whatever, you got us. I'm going to order the purple model. Hopefully it doesn't sell out. But because I'm going to order the purple model with one terabyte, 
This thing is fifteen hundred and ninety nine dollars. I just I already looked on uh, Apple's uh, website for ordering. It says these devices have a new front design. As far as I'm concerned, they they I think they made people a little bit happy by showing them that what they did was they made this thing called the Dynamic Island, which is basically the cutout. They've decided that since they're not ready to get rid of the cutout, that they're going to make it a feature. So the cutout can grow and change shape so that it, it looks like it's supposed to be there. So if you have background apps running and they use the Dynamic Island, they can show you things inside of it. Like they can show you uh, that there's a phone call in progress or they can show you uh, that uh, there's GPS directions or something. Or they can show you that the microphone is on, or they can show you that the speaker is on, or whatever. So, that's probably a pretty decent idea. Um, I'm shocked at this point, this many years in, that unlike some of these Chinese companies that make these phones, and who've been trying to one-up Apple with their Android phones, who've been trying to one-up them forever... You had some phones like Oppo Find X where it had a pop-out camera in order to make it so that there is no uh, front notch or anything. And they have a pop-out camera that pops up, takes selfies or whatever, and then it goes back into the phone. Then there was one company that I saw where they were working on having an invisible camera, which was basically a camera hiding behind the display. I'm really shocked that Apple hasn't done that. Like, I'm surprised that Apple didn't figure out a way to engineer out the obviousness of the camera altogether. So what they've done instead is they decided to, you know, make it a feature now. So they call that the digital island, dynamic island or whatever. So I thought that was kind of interesting. But at the end of the day, the notch never really bothered me. When I watch videos on my iPhone, usually the video is already cropped so that it goes right below the speaker notch so that you never really see it. Um, some phones have engineered out the uh, notch entirely, like the Oppo Find X for one, which is an older phone. And they did it because they had that motorized camera. Thing about it is a lot of other camera uh, makers on these smartphones, they followed suit. But the problem that I see with all of those phones is they all look alike. Like, from a distance, you can't tell what they are. One of the things about the notch that I think Apple is doing on purpose, I think they don't want to get rid of it. I'm pretty sure that if Apple really wanted to, they could easily engineer out the camera or they could find a way around that. But I think they want their front-facing display to be something that's identifiable from a distance. Because what's funny is, if you look at a crowd of people and you look at them while they're holding their phones, you know exactly who has an iPhone. And you know who has an Android phone, too. iPhones are designed to be used by, like, one hand. And they're also held... They're just, the, the way a person holds them is completely different than the way a person holds an Android phone. Android phones come in all these different shapes and sizes. iPhone only comes in one size. I mean, granted, there's the minis and then there's the SE and whatever. But the point is, an iPhone comes in a specific size that nothing else has. It has a specific shape that nothing else has. It has a specific front facing display that nothing else has. So I really believe that they don't want to get rid of the notch. I think they want to keep the notch there so that when somebody's holding an iPhone, you know they're holding an iPhone. That's ultimately advertisement. And that's the reason why Apple's worth $3 trillion and Samsung's not, for one. And that's the reason why Oppo is not worth $3 trillion. In fact, I don't even know if they even sell that stuff here in, in America. When I was in the uh, Philippines and I think when I was in South Korea, I stopped into some of those stores and I looked at some of those Chinese-made phones and some of those, uh, like those Samsung phones and everything that was their state-of-the-art at the time. For the most part, nothing about any of those things intrigued me. I mean, they were nice, but they just weren't the iPhone. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. When you buy into the iPhone ecosystem, you stay there. Everything about iPhone, my, from my iMovie to... Whatever. I just, I like staying with this ecosystem. I've invested in this ecosystem. It, at this point, I'm not leaving. 
And I haven't seen anything else out there that would make me leave. So, um, as far as this iPhone event, to tell you the truth, I already knew I was going to buy an iPhone 14 no matter what they came up with. I already knew it because I want to upgrade and I'm going to upgrade my parents with my old phones. What I will say is I was actually slightly, not really disappointment, not really, dis it wasn't really disappointment. I was just slightly shocked to see that uh, the leaks were not true. For example, one leak said that there was going to be an 8K camera. Now, first of all, we don't need 8K cameras in these cell phones yet. 4K 60 frames per second with better image stabilization is actually pretty good. Um, Apple seems to focus on refinement rather than trying to one-up you with a feature that most people don't need or use. There's no reason to have 8K. YouTube barely supports it. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok don't support it. If you upload a video to one of these services, these social medias, they're going to downgrade that video to like 720p. There's no point in me taking 1,000 megapixel photos if you're just going to downgrade my fucking photo. It doesn't make sense. So what they did release was they said, okay, yeah, they've got a 48 megapixel camera. Now, here's the problem, though. When I take photos, you probably notice that they use up more data now. When you take photos and you have all these megapixels, see the, the 12 megapixel sensor, in my opinion, was good enough. But they're trying to make it so that the iPhone's camera is state of the art and it's second to none. Okay, fine. My issue is that what they, I think what Apple should do is they should have like a social media mode or something. Now, most of the social medias automatically downgrade your photos anyway. But the problem that I have is when you take these photos and you try to email them, or if you take these photos and you try to, um, what, what service? There's certain services that will tell you, yeah, this photo is way too big. Uh, the file size is too big. Um, I'm thinking about which service that is because that happens to me a lot when I'm on, um, well, certain services. Usually it's an email. The email will say, yeah, this uh, file size is much too large and everything. But you know what I'm talking about. So, again, video is downgraded to 720p. Almost none of the social medias have 1080p video, as far as I know. YouTube allows you to upload in 1080p, 60 frames per second, or 4K, 30 frames per second, or 60 frames per second. As far as I'm concerned... If, if Apple had made an 8K camera, that would be cool. I just don't need it. And uh, most people don't even have what they would need to watch an 8K video. Most people, if you go into their house, they've got these cheap-ass Walmart TCLs. Uh, these things are like 4K. Um, and they don't really support like up to like 120 or 240 or anything. They're very, very simple. They're good enough for watching TV. If you check on most of these people's desktop computers, most of them, they're lucky to have a 1080p monitor. Some of them still have 720p monitors. Some people have 4K monitors, but usually those are the enthusiasts or the professionals. So for the most part, you know, most monitors, if you do find brand new monitors, it's going to be like 1440p. You're not going to see too many people with 4K monitors unless they went out and spent a lot of money on their rig. Most of them didn't. So... I think right now, 4K 60 frames per second video is fine. I've, maybe two or three years down the road, it'll be 8K. To me, I don't even see really what the difference is, except for when you're doing playback on you know, large cinematic televisions. Um, so I was a little shocked about that. The other thing I'm disappointed... Now, the actual disappointment I have is, again, I was thinking that they were going to make features specifically to get around COVID issues. What Apple ultimately did was they made a mask mode where the camera can detect your face under the mask. Okay, fine. I would argue that that can't be 100% accurate. Sometimes I have my shades on. Sometimes I have my shades and my mask on. Sometimes I have just my mask on. It's not always accurate. Sometimes it'll work perfectly. Sometimes it won't. Sometimes it'll read my face with the mask and the glasses on. And I'm trying to figure out, I'm like... Anybody could be under there. Is that a security risk? 
I really wanted Touch ID to make a return, like the one that they had on the iPad with the sleep-wake button as a Touch ID pad. I really, really wanted that, but Apple seems to be going in the exact opposite direction. They seem to not want to give you a Touch ID button ever again. I always liked Touch ID. Ever since the 6S, I always thought Touch ID was really cool. Um, but it looks like we're just going in the opposite direction. No Touch ID sensor. Uh, other than that, was there anything else? Okay, new color is just purple. I know they have gold, silver, and black, or space gray, or space black, whatever they call it. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's those are the main things. You're going to have the, the iPhone 14 Pro. I'm going to order it. I'm going to order the biggest size, one terabyte. That's another thing that I just thought of. I heard a leak that said that these things might be available in two terabytes. Honestly, I didn't believe that leak at all. And the reason why I didn't believe it is because usually when Apple makes something new, they'll sell it for two years and then they'll change and upgrade. So with the iPhone 13, they introduced one terabyte. I really wasn't expecting a two terabyte iPhone 14. However, probably by iPhone 16, they'll have two terabytes and they'll probably have eight what is it, 8K video, maybe. For right now, one terabyte is more than enough for me. And when I give this phone to my mom, you know, one terabyte will be more than enough for her because, you know, she doesn't use her phone as much as I do because I'm making YouTube videos. Um, other than, okay, so you, those are the only two feet, those are, well, the three features, those are the only three features that they kind of missed out on. All of this talk about transistors and all of this uh, f-stop aperture shit. I don't know nothing about any of that stuff. I keep it very simple. All you got to do is tell me, you know, what is the resolution I can take video at? What's the frames per second I can take video at? Like, if, for example, if they come out and say, yeah, we got 120 frames per second in 4K. I go, oh, okay, wow, that sounds cool. Now, as far as all this professional photography stuff, listen, I'll take your word for it. I'll take some photos. Chances are they'll look great. I won't notice any problems with them, and that's it. Then I'll share them on Facebook. They'll downgrade them, and, and that's just that. Most of, most of the stuff that we're sharing in Messenger and Facebook, all of this stuff gets downgraded anyway. So, you know, you could, you could give me a billion megapixel camera. It doesn't matter if, if, if I can't use the photos. So I think in the long run, not giving us some crazy upgrade was probably a great idea. So, as far as I can see, that's basically it. All of this talk about virtual reality, all of this talk about an Apple car and all that shit, just another year has gone by and none of that happened. As far as I can tell, Apple is satisfied making Apple CarPlay. Apple is satisfied having its Apple CarPlay in all of these cars. Even the Hyundai Sonata rental car that I'm driving right now, that has Apple CarPlay and it also has Android Play in it. And I really think that that's the best way to go because this way, the entertainment in the car is user defined. So if I want to listen to YouTube, if I want to watch, uh, uh, I don't know, Netflix or some shit, you can do screen projection and you can do that in the car. Apple in my opinion, it would make no sense for them to go into the car market. I think if they have built a car, they're probably using it as a test bed for proof of, uh, proof of feature and proof of form technology. I really doubt that Apple wants the liability of building a car. Because, you know, if anything happens to that car and you're inside it, you could sue them for billions, maybe, you know, millions. I don't think they want that liability because we already see what's happening with Tesla. Tesla with that self-driving technology, all that shit has to do is run down a child and somebody's ready to sue for millions. I don't think Apple wants that kind of liability. Apple can put their technology in everybody else's technology and they can have the iPhone as the computer at the heart of whatever that technology is. Apple CarPlay is in boats. Apple CarPlay is in airplanes. Apple CarPlay is in motorcycle radios. Apple CarPlay is in um, jet skis, and jet, well, jet scooters or whatever those things are. So they can put it in everything. 
But it doesn't make sense for them to make that stuff themselves. It just doesn't make sense. So I don't think we're going to see an Apple car anytime soon. As far as virtual reality, again, another year passed. No virtual reality from Apple. And also, no augmented reality either. There's been so much talk, so many of these false leaks about there's going to be augmented reality, virtual reality. Basically, what you're dealing with is you're dealing with a lot of YouTubers who are just making fake videos in order to get views and clicks. And then when it all comes down to it, oh, well, I guess that leak was false. And then they just move on. So they get their, their money, they get their views, they get their clicks, and then they just, you know, mosey on out of there. And it's like, whatever. So that's that. So you got the iPhone iPhone Pro Max, Satellite Emergency Services, the uh, Apple Watch Ultra, the uh, AirPod Pro, and the new Apple Watch 8, and the Apple Watch SE. I think, obviously, the two main things that people took away from this event was iPhone 14 and the Apple Watch Ultra. Do I think most people are going to buy Apple Watch Ultra? I think they'll go- I think they're going to want it, but I don't think they're going to buy it at $800. Um, that's just it. And, and, and to tell you the truth, I'm starting to think that the Apple Watch, the regular Apple Watch may be a little bit overpriced. I, I think that there's some way that they should have dropped prices on these things by now. But, um, the bottom line is they know their pockets better than I do. And they're the $3 trillion company and I'm not. So I'll just leave it at that. So, um, that's my recap. Um, as I said, I'm ordering the iPhone 14 purple, one terabyte, $1,599. And, uh, that's that. So, um, you know, questions, comments, uh, you can put those down in the URL section at the bottom of the page.